Welcome back. We're going to give a shot to a partition division problem now. So in partition division, this one's worded much differently. And the idea here is that we have four whole units, but that represents three quarters of what we want, for example. Maybe we have four buckets of sand, and that's enough for three quarters of one sand castle. How much is one whole sand castle? So if we're going to take a look at this problem, then let's try to get a, a description, a picture if we can, to kind of visualize what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I do have four units, but that represents three quarters of my whole piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sketch out this piece. Now I've broken it into quarters because currently I have three quarters of what I need. And that is four whole units. Now again, this piece, this component, represents exactly one whole unit, one whole sandcastle, whatever it might be. And that's what I'm looking for in partition. In the partition model, I am looking for how much is in one whole object. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is four whole units. And if you notice, there are exactly three pieces here and those three pieces are equally sized. So for those three equally sized pieces, I'm going to take this four whole units and divide by three. Now what that's going to do is it's going to tell me not what my total answer is, but it's going to tell me how much is in one of these pieces. So let's go ahead and kind of see if we can visualize that. So here, I'm trying to just see how much is in this piece which would represent one quarter of the whole unit or one third of my four whole units. So to do that, what I have then is of course dividing. This is four thirds. I could equally represent this as four times one third, but it gets me to the same result. So four thirds. And that four thirds is one quarter of one unit. Well, I don't want to know how much one quarter of one whole unit is at the end. I really want to know how much one whole unit is, which would be four of these pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this result, which is four thirds, and multiply it by four, because I want four of those quarter pieces to make one whole unit. And the end result here is going to be 16 thirds or 5 and 1 third. So again, I have now found this amount to be how much is in one whole unit. Now what we've really done then in terms of an algorithm for this the algorithm would be, I take my four whole units, I divide by three, and then I multiply that result by four, which would be the same thing as four times one third, and take that entire result and multiply it by four. Now that's exactly what we did. And now if you take a look at that, what have we done? This is exactly the same thing as 4 times 1 third times 4. That's the associative property. And that is the same thing as 4 times 4 thirds. So this is the way that we go about solving the problem. That's how our picture links to a specific algorithm. This algorithm says that this result 4 divided by 3 quarters is exactly the same as 4 times the reciprocal, which is 4 thirds. And as we've just shown, that's exactly 16 thirds, or 5 and 1 third. That is one method of doing partition. Now let's take that exact same problem and show an alternate method for doing partition. Now as you've seen, 
the two things that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to multiply by 4 to get 4 whole pieces in the last case and divide by 3 or multiply by 1 third to find out how much was in one small piece. But in this new one what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay 4 is 3 quarters of my entire object. All right. Well what I'm going to draw out then is there's a horribly drawn three quarters and there we are. Let's try that one again to make it look anything like three quarters. Ah, that'll work. So I'm going to call this three quarters and, and you'll see in just one moment I'm going to color it and I'm going to represent another group of three quarters and here's another group of three quarters and finally a last group of three quarters. Okay, now let me go ahead and color them in so we can see the difference between them. So this is one three quarters of a whole unit and I know that's four total, four total whatever we're using for this problem. This is another three quarters which is four whole units. And the last one, let's choose a, oh, that'll be a graphically nasty color. There's a little orange for us. So what I've done here is there's one three quarters, there's another three quarters, there's another three quarters. Each one of these represents four units. Let's go down to the bottom. This is our very last one here. And I'll choose a happy color for it, a nice green. So what I've done is I've taken three quarters and I have done four groups of that. Now again this piece right here is four. This piece right here is four and this piece right here is four along with the last one. At this stage I have a grand total of 16 units spread out between these pieces. But now take a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this last one and I'm going to take one of these and use it to fill this one in. And then I'm going to take another one of these and use it to fill in this gap. And the last one I will use to fill in the final gap. So what I end up with is these are 16 whole units, but now they represent three whole parts. So maybe that represents now three whole sand castles. Well, I don't care about how much is in three whole sand castles. I care about how much is in one sand castle. So this is 16 is three whole objects, which means one whole object would be 16 divided by 3 or multiplied by 1 third. So 16 times 1 third is how much is in one of these because again I have three whole chunks so 16 thirds is my final answer which is 5 and 1 third. Now taking a look at the whole are these completely different methods? Somewhat. Let's go back and take a look at what we actually did in this new system, in this new method. In this method, what I did is I took the four units that we started with, and I multiplied by four. And what that did is that gave me enough for three whole groups. And I took that result, and I multiplied it by one-third, which turns out to give us the same thing as doing four times, four times one-third which is the same as four times four thirds. Algorithmically, this does give us 16 thirds. But if you notice what we did, we have now turned division into multiplying by the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal. So this is 16 thirds both pictures, take a look, both pictures will give you the same result. 
So it kind of depends on whichever one you think works for you, and definitely whichever one works best for the students that you'll be teaching. But both of these represent a partition model. Hopefully that helps clear up the difference between measurement and partition. But I think I'll make another quick video about measurement uh, with slightly more challenging numbers. So take a look for that later.